Hi, welcome back to quantum mechanics. We have completed the first chapter in which we discussed the fundamentals of the mathematical formalism. We shall now move on to the second chapter. In this chapter, we shall focus on the dynamics of quantum mechanical systems. So this means that we would like to obtain an equation that governs the time evolution of quantum mechanical systems. So the question we are asking is, how do the systems, how do quantum mechanical systems change with time. So things change with time. So is there an equation that governs the change in quantum mechanics? In classical mechanics, we have already seen such equations. We are familiar with Newton's second law or Lagrange's equations or Hamiltonian dynamics. We have seen these things. These are called time evolution equations. All right? So basically these equations tells us, these equations tell us how a classical mechanical state changes in time, right? changes with time. Now, uh, we need to obtain such an equation also in quantum mechanics. So, we'll again look back to classical mechanics to get some idea as to what kind of equation we would like to have in quantum mechanics. So, we'll look at certain fundamental features of classical dynamics, which we believe should be fundamental also to uh, quantum mechanics. Right. So we'll discuss what's called as determinism and reversibility. I think we have already discussed some of these things when we did, when we studied classical mechanics. Right. So this determinism and reversibility together, it's called uh, conservation of information. Okay. And uh, based on these features, we'll try to develop a time evolution equation in quantum mechanics. So as we said in the first chapter, we know how to describe a quantum mechanical system. We know the basics of the mathematical formalism. We said that a quantum mechanical system can be represented by a vector and observables can be represented by Hermitian operators. And we know that the measurement outcomes, the possible measurement outcomes are the eigenvalues of the Hermitian operators. Right? So we have seen these things. We know how to represent these vectors and uh, operators in certain bases. Right? So we can actually work with numbers. But one thing we have not discussed yet is uh, how physical systems, okay, how quantum mechanical systems actually change with time. Right? So in this chapter, we'll be interested in the dynamic development of the state right, or observables. Right? So we'll see that there are uh, dif different ways in which we can formulate this. So we'll, uh, we'll focus on the dynamic development of state or observables. Okay? So in other words, we are concerned here with the quantum mechanical analog of Newton's equations of motion or Lagrange's or Hamilton's equations of motion. And so we have already seen that there are different equivalent ways to describe the classical mechanical time evolution. We have studied this in detail in the last semester. Let's start uh, with the fundamental features of classical dynamics. Okay? The first feature is determinism. I think we have already mentioned that uh, the equations of motion in classical mechanics are completely deterministic. Okay? This means that given the, the physical state at any moment of time, the future is completely determined by the dynamical equation. For example, if you take Newton's equation, f is equal to m d square x by dt square, uh, this in, in one dimension, right? if we are looking at a particle in one dimension, this is the equation that governs its uh, dynamics in classical mechanics. Now we know that in classical mechanics, a state is labeled by specifying the position and momentum. All right. So this determinism means that, for uh, if you are talking about Newton's equation, this means that if you know the position and momentum at any given time, the position and momentum at any future time is completely determined by this equation. Right. It's completely determined by this equation. So the present together with the equation of motion completely determines the future. Right? This is what determinism means. And we know that uh, equations of classical mechanics have this feature. The second important feature, which also we have mentioned, is reversibility. Okay? So reversibility means that the laws of physics are deterministic into the past as well as to the future. Right? So the laws of physics in classical mechanics, they do not distinguish between past and future. All right. In our experience, we know that we uh, see past and future differently. But, but the fundamental equations of motion in classical mechanics, they don't actually distinguish between past and future, which means that it, it works the same way towards the future or towards the past. 
This means that if we know the position and momentum at any time, right? Suppose this is the time axis. Let me put time here, right? If we know the position and momentum or the state of the classical mechanical system at any time, the future as well as the past are completely determined by Newton's equation, right? Or any equation, any dynamical equation that you're working with. We know that equivalently we can formulate the dynamics in terms of Lagrange's equations or Hamilton's equations. Right? So whichever equation you are using, all these equations have this feature. They are deterministic and reversible, right? which means that if the state of the system is given at any time, all right, the past as well as the future are completely determined. Now, if you look, at, look uh, a little bit deeper into this, this is possible because distinctions are conserved. Right, I'll explain this. Suppose we have got two states at a given time, state system, state one and state two. All right. Now suppose the, they both evolve into one state. All right. Suppose they, if we start on on uh, if we start with state one and state two, suppose that it evolves to one state, state three. All right. In this case, the distinctions are not conserved. All right. This means that. When we started, these two states were distinct. They were different. These are different states. Okay. If they evolve into the same final state, now given the state three, right? We don't know whether it came from equation of state one or state two. All right. So for reversibility to work, distinct initial states must evolve into distinct final states. All right. Distinct initial states must evolve into distinct final states. Only then can we say that these equations of motion are reversible. Only then can we say that the time evolution is reversible. Right? If they evolve into the same state, then the future, the information about the past is lost because we don't know where it came from. I hope this is clear. So for reversibility to work, distinct initial states must evolve into distinct final state. So this means that the equations of classical mechanics, the time evolution equations of classical mechanics, uh, give a unique evolution, all right? It gives a unique evolution. I think we mentioned this when we discussed phase space trajectories, okay? So we, we know that the state space in classical mechanics is known as the phase space. We said that phase space trajectories cannot cross, right? These are not allowed, okay? Because this would mean that given this state, we don't know whether the future is this or this, all right? So we have mentioned this when we said that the phase space trajectories or the phase space paths cannot cross, all right? Phase space trajectories cannot cross, cannot cross, okay? It's the same thing as saying that distinctions must be conserved. Now, together, we call this as the conservation of information, okay? So, information conservation is the rule that the laws of dynamics must be deterministic and reversible must be deterministic and reversible. So we call it the conservation of information because time evolution, uh, say for example, let's look at this like this, right? We say that the state has evolved, the system has evolved from state one to state two, okay? This evolution preserves the information about the system because given state two, we also, we, we, we also become aware of state one. All right. So the information, the available information that is in the description, that is in the specification of state one, is also available in the specification of state two. The information is not lost. So if information was lost, then given state two, we wouldn't know that it came from state one. Right. So in general, determinism together with reversibility is called conservation of information. All right. So this is a fundamental law in physics, basically, because this says that uh, this says that information is not lost in time evolution. Right? Information that uh, the information that is there in the specification of the state is not lost over time. Right? All the information is preserved. The conservation of distinctions in classical mechanics can be clearly seen in what's called the Liouville's theorem. Okay? We are not going to prove the theorem here. Uh, you might have already proved it when you studied uh, classical mechanics or when you studied statistical mechanics, right? Over there, you might have seen the proof. So we shall not go into the details of the proof. We'll just try to understand what it says. Now, Liouville's theorem is about phase space trajectories. So what's phase space? 
phase space is the space of states space of states in classical mechanics we know that for an n particle system it's a six n dimensional space right six n dimensions in which three n are the positions and three n are the momenta so if you have an n particle system we imagine a six n dimensional space called phase space in which every point represents a possible state a possible physical state of the n particle system okay so this point in phase space we shall call the phase point or the representative point okay we'll call it the phase point phase point okay so every point in phase space is a possible state of a physical system of a classical mechanical system okay so this point actually traces a trajectory in phase space as the system evolves in time because as the system evolves in time the state changes so initially so here we have got a pictorial representation of it initially suppose you start here after some time the state will have changed and which means that uh, after some time the physical state is represented by another point in phase space okay so in other words as time evolves the phase space traces a trajectory in phase space the phase point traces a trajectory in phase point all right so here these are all examples for such trajectories right so if you start here if you start with this state it evolves along this trajectory in phase space etc okay, these are called time evolution curves or the evolution curves so states are represented by points in phase space and the time evolution is represented by trajectories in phase space okay now liouville's theorem says that time evolution preserves the phase space volume so liouville's theorem says something about the this uh, phase space trajectories and it says that the time evolution is volume preserving volume preserving in phase space of so time evolution preserves the volume of phase space so for example let's look at this point all right let's consider a volume like this now every point in this volume is a possible physical state of the system okay so every point will trace a trajectory as the system evolves with time so every point is a possible physical state and all these phase points uh, what do you say yeah all this phase point trace a trajectory in phase space as the system evolves from time t1 to t2 say okay now liouville's theorem says that as as this phase point or as this phase point evolve into another point or evolve to different points in phase space the total volume of phase space okay, the total volume the total volume occupied by this phase point phase points will remain constant okay, that's what's shown here here we have a volume right here we have another volume these two volumes will be exactly the same this is what uh, Liouville's theorem tells us now this clearly means that phase space trajectories of two neighboring points cannot get closer together right? if, if two if two trajectories get closer together the volume could decrease okay so when you say that the phase when you say that the volume of a collection of phase points does not change this means that different trajectories cannot get closer together it cannot get more crowded as it evolves in time okay so here we see that the shape of the volume has changed and the shape of the volume may change all right here we have a particular shape here the shape has changed but the volume has to be exactly the same these are equal volumes so Liouville's theorem actually strongly says that distinctions are conserved right distinct initial states evolve into distinct final state not only that not only that these trajectories in phase space do not even merge together they don't they don't even get closer together okay so this is a very important theorem when you study classical statistical mechanics now over there you may state it in a slightly different manner you may say that the density of states around a phase point remains constant so if you if you follow a trajectory in phase so if you follow a phase point in phase space if you follow a trajectory right the density of phase points uh, in the neighborhood of it right the density of phase points in the neighborhood of it remains constant you could actually follow you could actually follow a phase point like this all right but at any point the density of phase points around it in the neighborhood has to remain constant it's another way of saying that these uh, trajectories do not uh, 
do not converge together they don't merge together they don't get closer together right or in other words distinctions are clearly conserved now this Liouville's theorem is actually it's, it can be shown that it's a property of Hamiltonian time evolution it's a property of Hamiltonian evolution in other words classical mechanical evolutions conserve uh, classical mechanical evolution conserves uh, the distinctions right they don't merge two different distinct two different states into they don't merge two different states together they don't merge two different phase space trajectories together they remain distinct for all uh, theoretical and practical purposes okay so the idea of reversibility is most clearly seen uh, in Liouville's theorem when we discuss classical mechanics okay